Viburnums are a real nice hardwood shrub that are easy to grow. Birds also love viburnums, especially in winter when it's hard to find food. This is Mike at Highland Hill Farm and he's got a viburnum here, a uh, cutting. Okay. And this is Lorenzo and he's going to be telling Lorenzo and educating him on how to make a cutting from a viburnum. Okay, so we were, this is our viburnum. You tell it's viburnum because it's opposite, the branches are opposite from one another. A very good way of distinguishing feature of it. And this looks like to be a double file viburnum. And this is a, a branch from a double file and you can make cuttings off of it. The better the wood you start with, the better the cutting you're gonna get. Now everybody does their cuttings in different ways. You can easily have a cutting this size and not have a problem. But sometimes you can even have a cutting that size and not have a problem. And sometimes you can even have a cutting that size and not have a problem. But it all depends on the size of the plant that you want to start with. Uh, usually saying the harder that it is to do the cutting, the smaller the cutting you want to do. You don't want to do a large, big cutting on something that's really tough to go do. This is a thing, uh, thing to remember. But the uh, easier it is to do the cutting, the larger the cutting you want to do. So this is probably as large as I would ever go. You notice the cut is done right below a union. And if we're going to keep this at this size, we would probably trim those guys off. Then we would score this with our blade to make injuries. Right there, that's where we're going to try to get the rooting to come out. The reason we cut and leave this right there is that this has a nice spot where the tree can stop infection from going up the cutting. And this is the spot where we're going to try to have the roots come out from. You can get calcine there, but you really would like to have it all over, up and down. But this is as big as the cutting as you wanted to go. You could easily make the cutting that big or even that big, and that should all go. Now, the next part is you need to do the top of the cutting. If you have all this here, it's too much leaf surface for a cutting to actually take. So if you're going to take a cutting from right here, you can, you'll can have to take some of this off because it's just too much. And that's dead right there. So we're going to take that off. And we just have to take it so that there's not too many leaves. You might even want to take that off. And just make it so it's as bare bones as possible so that the plant doesn't have a lot of foliage that it needs to come out with roots to support. You want to make it so that it, it gets off the ground and going. And again, you score it and you're good to go. So that's probably where I would be. And even if you wanted to, you could probably even take some more off. It all depends on what the room that you're going to have them put into and how well you're going to take it. But you, you want the system to work. You want the leaves to be as high up as you want. You don't take the leaves off the top. You take the leaves off the bottom. If the leaves are fully emerged and they're big leaves, you would want to cut the leaves in half or third so that the, the surface area of the leaf doesn't have to be taken care of and it's less stress on the cutting itself when you're doing the cutting. Then you take the cutting and my dad has the root hormone and there's a couple of different types of hormone. We'll see what this one is. This is more of a powder that's a little wet, but then whatever is fine. We actually dunk this in water first. And you dunk that in water. And then you go in there and you put it in there to get it on there nice, like that. And then you stick it, if my dad's using these guys, you can stick it right into there. Boom, done. Now, if you're going to do that, that's called a direct stick. That means you're directly sticking it into the pot. You're going to try to sell it in or transplant it in. Many times, cuttings like this are done in other trays or in big long beds that they put them right into the bed and they just jam and fill roll rows after rows after rows of cuttings and then finally is the maintenance of the plant and these are some other plants you can see that these are huge cuttings hopefully they can take you can see all the leaves on it there's a lot of leaves there for that really young root system to to support so it's, there's a lot of risk involved in that. But you have these containers over it so to keep the moisture in so the plant doesn't lose moisture. 
If the plant loses moisture, it's done. It's cooked. And uh, many times people do not use containers like this, but you can. In commercial settings, they usually use overhead irrigation to spray a mist over the leaves to keep the humidity as high as possible so the plant does not lose moisture. But you can use things like this to keep the humidity high around the plant so the plant does not uh, lose moisture. Moisture is the number one thing you don't want to lose. Okay, now the potting soil, Mike, that you want to use. Oh, there's a lot of different kinds of potting soil. The number one thing you have to be careful of potting soil for cuttings. And remember, we did all those injuries on it. There's injuries all over it. If you use potting mix that has not sterile, you're basically wasting your time because that's going to create infections. But this is a potty mix that we have. And we fill it up a little bit with the potty mix. And you lightly put it in because you don't want to scrape off all the mix. And you don't pack it down because you want the air to work around the plant. You don't want it to be starving for air because air is needed in order to grow. So keep the air on with as high humidity with that uh, rooting hormone on it. And you're pretty much good to go. This is a potting mix, but there's a lot of many, many, many different types of potting mix you can use. Usually the more open the mix, like the other that sand perlite was much better than a heavier mix like this is because you're getting that air into it. The only problem with the light mixes is that it dries out and it's very difficult to do light mixes in containers like this or direct sticks. Direct sticks are not used with perlite or sand. Direct sticks are usually used with other ones. And then we put this over to try to help hold the, the humidity in. But if, if that's as long as you keep humidity on it, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, Mike. Well, thank you very much. Call Highland Hill Farm for your viburnums. 215-651-8329. We're located in Fountainville, PA, near Doylestown in Bucks County.